So whenever you see two equations that have the exact same coefficients, you can either add them or subtract them. When I'm subtracting, what I like to do is I like to put parentheses around this. Because again, remember, you're subtracting each one of these variables from the top. What's up, guys? In this video, what I want to do is cover three easy problems that you absolutely need to know when solving a system of equations. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to work at the algebraic approach for solving a system, basically substitution or elimination. Now, we're going to look at three different systems to be able to go ahead and solve. And while you could use either substitution or or elimination for any of these three problems, I'm only going to pick one that I feel is kind of like the best way to approach the problem in the quickest, easiest method. So let's go and take a look at this first example where you can see I have x equals 4y plus 7 and y equals negative 3y minus x. Now, my kind of golden rule that I like to follow when looking into solving a system of equations, like my main tip that I kind of tell my students, whenever you have a variable isolated all by itself, use substitution. Any other type of problem, a lot of times elimination is going to be better. But when you have a variable already isolated, in this case, we have both of our variables isolated, go ahead and just use substitution. Now, in this case, since we have x and y are both isolated, we actually get to pick which one we're going to substitute into the other equation. So it actually works out kind of nice here because we have options. So now we want to look at if we plug an expression in for a variable in one of these two equations, is one going to be easier than the other? And the only thing I can say is if I were to plug the expression 4y plus 7 in for x here, that might be a little bit easier because I'm just negating it, then multiplying by 4, which is going to maybe, I don't know, make the equation a little bit bigger. So again, it's really important to understand though, before we go ahead and do that, just exactly what substitution represents. If I say x is equal to a 4y plus 7, right? Those are equivalent. Those are equal to each other. So whenever I say x, I could also just mean 4y plus 7, right? They mean the exact same thing. So the reason why that's important is because when we're doing substitution, all we're basically doing is we're taking this variable x and we're just replacing it with the expression 4y plus 7. And again, we can do that because they're equal in value, right? Because there's that equal sign here, right? That x is equal to a 4y plus 7. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug the 4y plus 7 into the second equation. That's now going to give me the equation y is equal to a negative 3 minus. Now, again, it's really, really important that you do this is put parentheses around this. This is a big mistake that a lot of students will um, do. Whenever you're substituting in an equation, make sure you put parentheses because we're not just negating the 4y. We're negating the 4y plus 7. Okay, here's now my new equation with my x being substituted in for the expression 4y plus 7. Now I just need to go ahead and simplify and solve for y. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to distribute this negative across my 4y plus 7. And again, just remember that's really a negative 1, right? So therefore I have a y equals a negative 3 minus a 4y minus 7. Now I'll just want to go and get my variables to the same side. So I'll add a 4 y to the other side. And now I can also combine a negative three minus a seven. And if you owe me $3, you borrow seven more dollars, you now owe me $10. So therefore I have a five y is equal to a negative 10 divided by five divided by five y is equal to a negative two. Now again, remember when we're solving a system of equations, we're looking for the x as well as the y that are going to satisfy both equations. So we don't want to just be solving for one variable, we need to solve for both variables. Now the nice thing about having a system of equations where we have both variables already isolated is if I already know what y is, the next thing I want to do is figure out what x is. So I'm going to plug negative 2 into this top equation. You could plug it into the bottom equation, but then you have to resolve for x, which to me is like a little bit more work. So what I just recommend doing is take this negative 2 and plug it in for y, because again, going back to this original understanding, like y is equal to negative 2, right? They're interchangeable from each other. So I can just take this top equation and say x is equal to a 4 times a negative 2 plus 7, right? So now I can just go ahead and simplify this. The 4 times negative 2 is going to be negative 8. Negative 8 plus 7 is going to be a negative 1. So therefore, x is equal to a negative 1. So therefore, the values that are going to satisfy both these equations is when x equals negative 1 as well as when y equals negative 2. And if you want to think about this graphically, these two lines, if you were to graph them, would intersect at the coordinate point negative 1, negative 2. So if you were thinking about this as a coordinate point, you could also rewrite this like that. All right, now in this next example, you can see that none of my x's or y's are isolated. So therefore, I'm going to focus on the elimination method. Now, again, you could isolate them, right? It's really not that much difficult to isolate a variable, especially in this top equation. You just subtract a y to the other side or subtract an x on the other side, and then you could follow the exact same process I did in the last example. But in this case, I think elimination is going to be the best. What elimination is doing, or also called like the addition or subtraction method, is basically just combining these two equations, right? So if I just go ahead and take these two equations and I simply add them, there's something special that's going to happen. If I take x plus x is going to be, that's a 2x. And if I take a y plus a negative y, remember this is like a 1 in front, right? So that's a positive 1 minus a negative 1, which is going to really be like a 0y 
is equal to a 10. Now, again, what happens when you take a zero times anything? Well, it's just going to eliminate it, right? It's going to be gone. So zero times y is just zero, and we don't really need to write that. So therefore, I can say a 2x is equal to a 10. So the reason why we call this elimination method is because when you combine your equations, either by addition or subtraction, your goal is to eliminate a variable. Now, this one was really easy and really basic because you notice that the variable had the same coefficient, right? Which was one. One was positive, one was negative. That's why I added the two equations. And when I did that, our whole goal here was just to go ahead and get them equal to zero. So whenever you see two equations that have the exact same coefficient, you can either add them or subtract them. Now let's go and finish solving for x. So I'll go ahead and divide by two on both sides and I get a x equals five. Now go back to finding my y. Again, I can plug my x equals five into either one of these two equations. It does not really matter. The only thing I recognize here is if I plug a five into this top equation, my y is already positive up here, right? If I plug in five into here, that's fine. But then I have to get rid of like to solving for y is just going to be a little bit extra step. So I would always kind of prefer for the other variable to be positive, it's just going to make the solving a little bit easier. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a five in for the X of the top equation. And again, I'm going to put parentheses around this just so I can recognize for myself as well as like maybe my teacher that that's exactly what I did. I replaced a X with a five, right? Notice the difference between this top equation and what I wrote down here, right? This is really the exact same equation, except I just replaced my X with a five. Now to go ahead and solve, I can subtract a five on both sides and Y is equal to a negative two. Okay. Now let's just go ahead and verify this real quick, because I did say that when you have two equations that have the same coefficient, you can either add or subtract them. Now here, in this case, this was a positive one and a negative one. That's why I added them. But what if the only option you had was variables that had the same coefficient and they were the same sign? In that case, you'd want to subtract them. And that's exactly what we have here for the X. So just to kind of go a little above and beyond, let me show you exactly how that would work with subtracting two equations. Okay, so it's basically the exact same equation, but rather now and try to eliminate the y, I'm now going to try to eliminate the x. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually subtract the equations. Now, when I'm subtracting, what I like to do is I like to put parentheses around this because again, remember, you're subtracting each one of these variables from the top. So the way that I like to do this, and sometimes I literally will say this out loud, x minus x, right, is a zero x y minus a negative y, right? So minus a negative is going to be a positive 2y. And 3 minus a 7 is going to equal a negative 4. Now you can see that I have eliminated my variable x, right? So I'm left with a 2y is equal to a negative 4. And then you can divide by 2 on both sides and y is equal to a negative 2. And then hopefully you recognize that, hey, that's the exact same answer I had over here. But again, just to have a little fun, let's go ahead and plug that into the top equation to just go ahead and verify that's going to give me the correct answer, which I kind of already know it is, but that's okay. We want to make sure that we have everything good. So hopefully you can see that adding or subtracting for the elimination method works. However, I always prefer to do addition. So that's why I always like looking for either having a positive and a negative to be able to add. That's why I limited the Y variable by adding them rather than trying to subtract the two equations. Because I think you can agree when you start subtracting equations, it's just more likely that you can make some mistakes. But again, look out for it. If you only have two variables with the same coefficient, then just subtract the equations to eliminate that variable. Now in this example, you can see that I have my variable X, which is going to be isolated and it's now equal to seven seven Y plus six. So again, whenever my variable is isolated, I am going to use the substitution method. Basically, I'm going to replace my variable X in my other equation with the expression of seven Y plus six, because again, X is equal to a seven Y plus six, right? But again, just make sure when you, whenever you substitute in an expression in for a variable or a number with a variable, use your parentheses. So when I go ahead and replace my X with a, with seven Y plus six, it's going to look something like this. I'm going to use parentheses seven Y plus six, close the parentheses, plus 21y equals a negative 18. And again, the reason why using parentheses is so important because I'm not multiplying a negative three times seven or negative three times seven y. I'm multiplying a negative three times seven y plus six. So again, I'm going to use these little lines to represent that, that I'm applying that distributive property. So negative three times a seven y is going to be a negative 21y. Negative three times six is going to be a negative 18 plus a 21y equals a negative 18. Now, something's kind of cool is happening here when I try to go ahead and simplify to solve for y. A negative 21y plus a positive 21y is just going to go to zero, right? That's a zero y. Therefore, I'm left with the equation of negative 18 is equal to a negative 18. Well, that's kind of odd. Like, how do we solve? There's no more variables to solve for. So what does this mean? Graphically, this means we actually have the exact same line, meaning we have infinite many solutions. It doesn't matter what value you plug in for X and Y, it's going to satisfy both of these equations simultaneously. Therefore, our solution is going to be infinite many solutions. There we go, ladies and gentlemen, there is a foundation for solving a system of 
the equations algebraically. I hope this video was helpful for you. But if you feel like you're ready to go ahead and step it up to the next level, then go and check out my next video I have for you here. Or if you just want some more examples, notes, or resources, then go and check out the playlist and links that I have for you down below. I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.